Hi folks, let me briefly show you a bit about my latest project I'm working on, namely MLRS, and it's a LoRa-based radio and SEO link. So here, this is my test setup. So I should say that uh, I've never worked on this radio link stuff or frequency stuff before, so I started really as a baby. And now I maybe grew, grew up to, I don't know, a teeny or something like this, right? Um, but uh, there are something basic working, which I'd like to show you. So I had this uh, working just as a serial link for, for a couple, for, for two months on my copter. And then I took it off in order to add the radio link and all the frequency hopping and such things. So this is here what uh, I have now. It's a test setup. That's the transmitter. It's a Jumper T16. And it runs my open uh, TX telemetry script. And here I have a CEFM30 module, which I've modified. So this uh, runs now its own firmware. And there are a number of cables which you see coming out of it. Let's, let's have a look at it. But none of the cables are actually connected to anything. So these are just uh, serial cables which are not used. This is here the program cable not used. Here's uh, some, some debug cables which are not used. So all the communication is going uh, through the antenna, of course, through the CE model, through the internal JE bar module, and then uh, to my open TX uh, firmware and this telemetry script. So this here is uh, the, the usual telemetry script, uh, which uh, you might have seen from previous videos, okay? So here is a C receiver which is running the firmware and there's also a lot of cables going on right here. This is a debug cable. This is actually the telemetry cable. This here is just, uh, ah, this is the power and the S port output. So you see that here is a signal on the oscilloscopes, an S bus signal, right? And then the telemetry link is connected here to a flight controller which produces the muffling data and so on and so forth. And what you can see here, so it's connected, so you see the green light here, right? And uh, also here, there's a green, there green light, so that's a good signal, right? And here's a bit of information. So these are obviously the RSSI and LQ of the transmission uh, from the receiver to the transmitter. And here that's the opposite, the RSSI and LQ from the, for the transmission from the transmitter to the receiver. And here's a bit more metric which is actually uh, the interesting part maybe. So here's a bit more LQ values. I, so uh, there are different levels of uh, how this LQ, this final LQ is made of, which I shall display here. But these numbers here might be interesting. So this is here the bout rate of the serial data from the transmitter to our flight controller. At the moment, this is just 32 bytes per second. So it's not bits per second, it's bytes per second. And this is at the moment, I, I don't have a gimbal and no uh, camera on. So there's only essentially the heartbeat going from the transmitter to the flight controller. However, the back channel, there's much more traffic going on. So you see that from a receiver, we are getting about 1500 bytes per second. And this number is really what uh, should tell you that uh, that a uh, telemetry link or that, uh, that a radio link which is uh, should do muffling communication is kind of a reverse to a normal radio link because the large data flow is actually from the receiver to the transmitter and not the opposite, right? So, so here we are transmitting both uh, full radio channels and a bit of uh, muffling data, but we get the most data traffic is from the receiver to the transmitter uh, in the form of uh, muffling data. Okay, so this is uh, the setup and the firmware you can find uh, on my GitHub repository. So let's briefly do a short range test to show you that this is uh, a bit doing something. So let's do a short range test. I just will go to the outside and we will follow these values here. <clears throat> so we have now some concrete walls between us. And you see that the RSSI has dropped already to minus 90 about. 
right? So we still uh, have a significant. Okay, so now we are getting to the outside, right? And you can see when I'm pointing the antenna towards towards uh, the basement, uh, the link can get very very bad. Let's see. Right, but otherwise. Um, okay, so this here is in the outside. We have minus 95 or something like this. Okay, we had a brief connection loss, but reconnected quickly, right? Okay, so this is uh, how it works. Okay, so now you have seen the mini range test. Uh, we went from about minus 25 dBm to minus 95 dBm. So that's a range of 70 dBm, which we have covered, right? What I should add in addition is that the power level of the SX1280 was set to minus 18 dBm. Now, this is not the real power, uh, which is then really transmitted because uh, the C modules, they have a power amplifier but i've estimated that this uh, that this minus 18 dbm corresponds to about four or two uh, four dbm transmit power which corresponds to about let's say two to three uh, milliwatts right uh, what this also tells you that uh, one just has to change the flag here in order to increase the power power by 18 dbm at least Right? Or I shouldn't say at least or something like 18 to 20 dBm, which increases uh, the range by a factor of three. So what you have seen here is, so to say, uh, really a range test in the sense when it was done at relatively low power through uh, quite some massive uh, concrete walls uh, so that we had a link, a change of a link by 70 dBm. Okay, this is everything I wanted to show you. Have fun.